Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, cruisers and cruisettes. My name is DJ Matt Peterson of Peterson Productions Disc Jockeys from Northampton, Massachusetts. Tonight we are at the Hadley Brickhouse Drifters Cruise Nights, which happens each and every Monday evening right here in Hadley at the Hadley Men's Club, which is located at 138 East Street, Hadley, Massachusetts. This is our sixth year doing this event, and we are doing fantastic, as you can see. As you can see, we have plenty of cars, plenty of vehicles right behind us. We have cars of all types and all sizes. Um, you can come on down with your motorcycle, you can stop by with a monster truck, you can stop by with a racing car, modified, custom, whatever car you have. We've even had swamp rats down here before, but that's fine. We have many cars of the same makes and models. Stop and buy and join us every single Monday. We have a great food vendor. We're gonna talk about Dino's Concession. They are here each and every Monday night serving up some hot, delicious food. We have an open bar, which is inside the pavilion. We do have an indoor pavilion, as well as the outside green grassy area where people can actually do horseshoes, we have cars coming in, and we have many, many cars. Uh, we average sometimes many hundreds of vehicles here each every Monday night. So stop by and join us. Monday is right there. The Young Men's Club in Hadley, Massachusetts, 138 East Street, Hadley, Massachusetts. We're here from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock with weather permitting. Please go ahead and join us, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, Ronnie Rogers from uh, Florence, Mass. Um, I started working with him uh, quite a few years ago. Um, I was with my brother when he built the hot rod years ago. But uh, then I bought this one in 1972, and I only drove it for three years. Took it off the road in 74, and I only paid $1,350 for it, so I didn't know what to do with it. So I put it up in the barn. It stayed there for 35 years. I took it out of the barn in uh, 2007. I was working too much to, to really do much with it. I took it out in 2007, and I started working on it. It took me three years. It, it, everything's all original, but I had to do a lot of cleaning up. A lot of things didn't work on it. I did most everything myself. And uh, this is what it looks like now. I put it on the road in uh, 2010. So um, it, uh, this is my fourth year on the road with it. So I put, I've only put 3,000 miles on it, but uh, there was a lot of a lot of cleaning up to do for being in a barn for 35 years. <laughs> yeah, This is the first one they built, the Thunderbird. They wanted to make a luxury car, and they come out with it in 67, and they put the suicide doors on it. People ask why they're suicide doors, why they call them that. But if you, if you were to open it while you were traveling on the highway, you're not going to close it, you know, because that kind of the wind would take it. But um, you got locks in there so if there was kids in the back seat they can't unlock it so it's got all the features like that yeah and they made them i think uh 1971 the suicide doors yeah if if you if you have an old car when you're young don't sell it keep it like i did <laughs> like like i say it wasn't worth a lot of money back then but uh i put it away and now i'm having a lot of fun with it well, the weight of this car is 4,500 pounds. Yeah. It's uh, got a uh, three, 390 engine, 315 horsepower. So that's over two tons. Just yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, it, but it, it moves right along for an old car, you know, for a heavy car. Wow. Yeah. But it rides like a Cadillac. It's got coil springs all around. Yeah. My name is Mike Florio. I'm from Northampton, Mass. And this is my one of my pride and joys, I bought this truck many years ago. Uh, it was a diesel at the time and the motor was bad. So we decided to do a complete, complete resurrection. Frame off, we did a frame off res res resurrection uh, at Smith Vocational in Northampton. We did all, they did all the body work. Everything on this truck, sheet metal wise, except for the roof and the firewall is brand new. All General Motors products. And uh, I put a, a big block, a big block Chevy in it. It's 502 cubic inches. It maxes out about 550 horsepower. Um, I enjoy bringing it to the shows. Everybody likes it. It's quite a, it's quite a vehicle. I have a lot of fun with it. This, uh, this truck originally was a diesel, and I had a 350 cubic inch Chevy in it for a while. When we decided to do a complete restoration on, this, on the truck, um, I decided that it was time for a big block. So I looked around and I found a 502 cubic inch. 
which is the next size up from the 454. It's a 502, it, came, it was designed for a boat, it's a marine engine, and we ha I had it completely gone through, completely rebuilt, set up for the street. It goes very good. Um, many people are surprised by it. Uh, I've always wanted to do a truck and this is it. You know? I have a big block Corvette as well that I bought new, a 73, this is an 83. So, same color. So, and so we enjoy going to the cruise nights and here we are. Thank you. I think that it's the most fantastic hobby and if you have the room to do it, people should get involved with it and come out to cruise nights like this and you get to see, know people, see people from the area. There's some fantastic automobiles here and you'll learn quite a bit about, about cars and whatever. I, I think everyone should get involved with it. I really do, it's, it's quite a thing. It's quite a hobby, it really is. If you're going to do a restoration of a vehicle that if you have a favorite picked out, that you talk to people that have them, go to shows and find out, because in some cases, parts are hard to locate. Some of the older vehicles, it's hard to get parts. It's getting a little bit easier because there's a lot of aftermarket products out there now, but I suggest that you talk to people about it and see what's what, and, and, uh, and I'm around, I'm in Northampton, I'm around, I'm easy to find. I'll be very glad to talk to you about any of this. You know? Well, my name is Crystal Snape, and this is my husband, Jim Snape. Jim Snape originally owned a 1970 Super Bird, and uh, he sold that, traded it in for a truck in 1985, and he also owned a 1969 Roadrunner that was Lemon Twist. And after we had been uh, married for a while, we decided that we wanted something uh, along the same line, so we decided to go in the middle of the Superbird and the Roadrunner. We bought a GTX. This came from Minnesota. It was a seven-day road trip out and back, and uh, it, it was one of the most wonderful experiences that we, we bought the car off of eBay. It was one of the fortunate purchases. Um, I know some people have had bad luck there, but I had a lot of fun talking with the fellow who had the car. Got to know him. We talked for two weeks before I made an offer and he said, yeah, okay. So we came out, picked up the car. We've been taking her to shows. Uh, we took her to Hemmings uh, Cruise over in Bennington, Vermont uh, last summer and we took Best Mopar. We've taken 17 trophies in about 25 shows with her. It's done really well for us. Yeah, we, it, a lot of people really like it. This is a numbers matching car. She has all her original equipment that came when she was manufactured. So it's the original engine, the original transmission. Um, it's been restored. Uh, she has a fresh paint job, but this is the color that it came out. This is B5 blue. And, uh, this is just the way it came from the factory. Yeah, this here. is as you see it. This is an automatic. It's a 440 with an air grabber, but she has not been modified in any way. It's it's stock. And we like this one so much that we went out and we purchased a 70 Dodge Super B, which we also have. But that is got it's got a few more racy parts in it. That so, is totally unoriginal. I think the only <laughs> thing original on that is probably the doors and rear fenders, because uh, that started out as a Coronet and then it was changed into a Super B, and that is uh, 440 30 over, ported and polished with a Wii and high rise and three inch exhaust. So it's like you know it's a total different animal. This one here is like the beauty, and the other one is the beast. So. <laughs> but we really like the Mopars. Yes, we uh, we have just Mopars. We enjoy Mopars a lot. They're very dependable. Even you know, even in this age, they're very simple to work on. At, at this age, it's not like a bunch of computers and stuff. So it's just and friends. We go with groups, you know, and we all can help each other if something happens. It's because even though it's a Mopar, that one's a Pontiac. It's like they're still very simple. It's not like they are today. We've been coming here uh, for the last two years on and off uh, because there are so many cruises in the area, we try to try to move around and hit them all. So we'll come here probably five or six times this year. Yeah. We won the grand prize one time. It was the, the potatoes. We were so happy they were red potatoes. They were delicious. Yeah, so that was one of the prizes. And, uh, but yeah. It's just a great bunch of people to be with and be around. Uh, it's an hour's drive, but it's worth every minute. They should investigate the car 
as much as possible, even getting um, a mechanic to look at it, uh, because there are so many different vehicles out there. There's a lot of age to these cars, so there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But the more you investigate what you're interested in, uh, the better off you're going to be in the long run. And also, don't go over your head with the money because you're going to need money to work on the car. I don't care what condition it is that you buy it, you're going to need more money to put into it after the fact. It's just, it never fails. They're 40, 50, 60 years old or older. S stuff happens. So don't spend all the money on the purchase price and then think you're going to have a car forever. They are a part of your family and you have to invest time and money into them every year. We hope to uh, maybe not purchase another Mopar in the future. Yes. Uh, we're not quite sure what we're interested in. But we have a blue car, we have a red car, so maybe we'd like a white car. So we'd have the red, white, and blue.